Okay, so again, here's our cavity, and um, uh, we can we can basically consider the the hole as the black body because most the rays that come in, the light that comes in, the electromagnetic radiation that comes in, is very unlikely to escape directly. That is, a, a ray will is, is very unlikely to bounce around and then escape through the hole. Rather, it's likely to be absorbed. That increases the energy of the actual cavity. Okay, and uh, since the cavity is large, uh, eventually you can reach eventually you can reach thermal equilibrium, and then the uh, the radiation which comes out of the hole is basically uh, it, uh, at some temperature. Okay, so you can define a temperature for the for the cavity and the radiation inside the cavity, and the uh, what what the fraction of that which comes out of a hole can be thought of as thermal radiation. Okay, so this is uh, so a, a small hole in a cavity is um, is usually I mean is often used to sort of describe uh, sort of a, to think about. Uh, a black body. So it's the hole itself that's the black body and it's in thermal equilibrium with the actual cavity. Okay, so um, in the ni early 1900s, uh, two British physicists, John Rayleigh and Sir James Jeans, uh, both from England, um, they basically attempted to describe the spectral distribution of black body radiation that we've seen um, this uh, peaks distribution that we see here okay this very particular shape they attempt to describe that um, black body spectrum by uh, using purely classical physics purely classical arguments um, by considering again a cavity and the and by considering the, the hole in the cavity as the as basically the black body, okay, and so um, here's an outline of the idea, and then we'll go into some details. Basically, what they did is they said, okay, first let's let's determine the modes which fit into this cavity. So to help, you can you can um, in the end it's geometry independent, but to help do the development, you can choose a a cubical cavity, okay, and so we know that for example, if this is a ca this is a metal cavity. So we know that the, elect the electric field needs to be identically zero at the cavity walls. Okay, that you should have learned in your uh, electromagnetics class. And so, for example, we can have a wave, a standing wave, that has the, where one half of the wavelength fits into this cavity. Okay, and since it's a cubical cavity, then you would have another similar wave. Um, it fits along this direction and also one that fits in and out of the page along Z. But you can have other modes too, right? So you can have a um, you can have a mode like this and you can have uh, so any any basically wave that has uh, uh, a multiple of the half wavelength will fit into this cavity, okay? And so basically they can just sort of by knowing this they can sort of count up the number of modes that, that can that, will, that can exist inside the cavity, and then they can um, figure out how many of a given wavelength um, are in the cavity. So, for example, how many uh, of this one, the lowest order one that just has half a wavelength, okay, and then uh, and so on and so forth, and then they can basically just divide by the volume of a cavity to get the number uh, and and assign an energy. Uh, for each one of those modes, and that's the critical thing: is assigning an energy for each mode. Um, uh, and so then, the, the, uh, you, then they can determine the energy per unit volume per unit wavelength. And finally, from that, they can determine the average radiated energy per unit wavelength, which is, of course, what they're trying to find because that gives you the spectrum. Uh, and they wanted to compare that to the very peaked spectrum um, that that we've seen several times. So that's the basic idea, outline of the idea, and now let's sort of go through a few of the details.